Hello again everyone and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, in this video I'm going to be doing a little bit of work on a Mamiya 6 folding camera. Uh, I, I received a question from a customer of mine who uh, received a camera where the self timer wasn't working. So I'm going to describe in this video how to uh, disable uh, a broken self timer. I'm not going to show how to fix one because that would re require acquiring the parts to fix it. and. Uh, the parts are, of course, uh, pretty much impossible to find nowadays. Luckily, these are very simple and easy to work on camera. It doesn't require a lot in the way of tools. And to keep things especially simple, for my repair today, I'm going to be using a single tool, which is this uh, uh, 100 yen screwdriver. 100 yen is about, I don't know, 80 cents or something like that. And a few cotton swabs and maybe a little bit of lens cleaning tissue. And that's pretty much all we'll need to uh, to get this camera into more or less working order. So, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, kind of clean out the viewfinder system and to do that we simply need to remove the winding knob and you do that by turning it leftwards like that. Uh, there's a spring located underneath and there's a spacer underneath that which pops out. Then there are three screws on the top. It's very rare to come across a camera which is so easy to work on. Uh, the Fujika uh, 6 is a very similar camera. Uh, the top cover pops off like so. And uh, there's a shutter speed, or excuse me, shutter release button, a spacer, and spring and such. I'll go ahead and put these in a safe place so they don't roll away. And in this particular camera, there's a piece of glass and a moving uh, baffle for changing from 645 to 6x6 six six format. I'll go ahead and sit those down. And here we have the com complete viewfinder, rangefinder uh, system. It's very simple. We want to be able to clean up the inside, so I'll go ahead and remove this dust cover here. Okay. Oh, I don't want to drop it down. And this pops off and this gives you access to the uh, beam splitting mirror and the front window and rear window uh, for the viewfinder rangefinder system. So just take a cotton swab and clean off the front glass like so. And I've, sa I've said in other videos I'm kind of using my uh, ceiling lamp uh, uh, as a guide here to show that I've got it clean. It's reflecting uh, the lamp uh, through the glass at my face so I can see it. Uh, I want to try to clean the inside of the back here and what I try to do is usually just push out the glass like that. It usually pops out very easy, sometimes too easy. Uh, be careful not to drop this. It's very easy to drop it and lose it. I've learned that the hard way. There's one on the floor here somewhere. One of these days I'll eventually find if I haven't vacuumed it up already. And some dust inside. You can use a, a rubber blower like um, this here or just blow out the excess dust. Uh, Take a cotton swab and something. One thing that helps with the cotton swab, if you want to uh, uh, do cleaning, is to kind of bend over the tip of the cotton swab. And I do that simply with a pair of ordinary pliers. And this allows me to kind of reach around corners, and say to uh, clean the back side of this glass. Sometimes the front window will pop out uh, as easily as the back one does, and that's kind of uh, a good thing when you're repairing cameras, not a good thing if you're trying to use the camera and it pops out. And I'll clean uh, the beam splitting mirror here behind uh, the main viewfinder lens. Now one thing I won't clean, I'm not going to clean the back of the beam splitting mirror because that's incredibly fragile and if I try to do that, uh, the coating will just wipe right off and the uh, rangefinder won't work anymore. So by cleaning up the, the front and back glass and cleaning up the front of the uh, beam splitting mirror, you'll get about 80% of the gunk out and though it won't be perfect, it'll at least be uh, nice and bright and still easy to use. Okay, 
flatten out. I'm going to take a, a tiny bit of uh, contact cement and I just put it like on the sharp end of a q-tip like this and then I will pop the lens back in like so and that's pretty much it it's nice and clean I'll go ahead and put the cover back on here and put on the two screws I'm not going to show the the cleaning on the, on the metal parts on this camera because uh, uh, this camera uh, the metal parts are pretty much worn through and worn off so there's no sense in uh, polishing something which is already polished down to the brass uh, I want to clean off this window here of course so apply a little uh, lens cleaning fluid to it and I use microfiber cloths which I buy at the 7-eleven they work really well uh, and it seems the more you use them the better they work and then drop the glass in like so and uh, the selector here actually fits in a kind of funny way it fits in between the glass and the metal cover and uh, we need to put the shutter button and such back in here uh, if you have to adjust the the rangefinder in this camera you can do it easily while the the camera is disassembled uh, the screw is right here for adjusting the horizontal adjustment if you can want to do it without removing the top cover there's an access screw here just remove it and then you can access the adjusting screw go ahead and put the lower half of this here and uh, I'll go ahead and put the shutter button in here and it's kind of important that you put this in the right way it has a flat edge and you kind of want the, the rounded edge the circle edge to go toward the center of the camera if you have it facing the other way it's going to hit uh, the distance scale and then there's a short spacer which has to fit inside here like so and to put this on uh, you kind of have to hold it a little bit sideways like so and slide it on if you just drop it on the top of course the button will fall through and if you try to do it the other way the, uh, the lower button with the spring will pop out uh, by doing it this way uh, it's very simple and saves a, a little bit of a headache I'm gonna go ahead and put this on first and the reason I'm doing that is because often when I'm putting a screw here to put in this hole the screw will decide to fall in inside the top cover of the camera and then I'll have to take the cover back off to get the screw out and then start over again which is annoying okay. and then the spring goes on top here and then we push the winding lever like so and you just wind it till it starts making mechanical sound and that's it for uh, uh, cleaning out the viewfinder that took all of about nine minutes here so a pretty simple job and a quick job with just the basic minimal tools uh, for working on uh, cleaning out the shutter and stuff that's quite easy and also disabling uh, the self timer uh, I, what I'm doing on this camera, as I said before, applies to a lot of other cameras like the Fujika 6 or Super 6 and some cameras like the NKK cameras. Ones which have a maximum shutter speed of 1 300th and slower. If it's a faster shutter, it's going to be more complicated and you're going to need to use a more complicated method for these shutters with 1 300th and slower. Uh, just follow the method which I'm using here. The first thing I'm going to do is unscrew the front lens and that will give you access to the, the shutter blades. Uh, if you have uh, sticky shutter blades, you can kind of clean them with a solvent. Uh, you can charge the shutter, and by setting the camera to B, which is the other way, you can kind of move the, the shutter blades with your thumb here and open and close them. 
and that allows you to like take a cotton swab and remove any oil which is stuck to them and the good thing about these cameras you could remove the rear lens and you can clean the back of the blades also the proper way is of course is to completely remove the shutter and do it but probably most of you don't have the tools or the, the know-how to do it so uh, and this will do 80% of the work and uh, the camera will still work perfectly well after a very simple cleaning so let's go ahead and take off the the front of the uh, lens and what I'm going to do is remove this retaining ring using my screwdriver there are a couple of slots on either side and just have to be careful not to push down too hard on it when you're removing it because it bends a little easily and pop it off like so and then you can lift uh, the shutter speed selector ring and the retaining ring which fits on the front and this gives you access to the shutter mechanism so on the top here where I'm pointing the screwdriver this is the slow speed escapement and this controls like the one uh, second half second and uh, and whatever uh, shutter speeds the ones that re require a uh, slow operation uh, these are often slow or sticky a few drops of lighter fluid applied uh, just a little bit not too much because you don't want it to run down into the shutter blades and usually that will free up the uh, low speed and it'll work more quickly that also often works for a stuck self timer if you've got the camera apart this far you can uh, charge the shutter you can apply a few drops of uh, lighter fluid to the mechanism and then uh, depress the uh, shutter button and often that will unstick the self timer but in many cases and that's most cases with these cameras which I've come across uh, it doesn't work uh, it's either uh, when you press the when you push it to the side and you press the shutter button it just flops back and the shutter fires or it's just jammed and won't move uh, to remove it properly you would have to remove the entire uh, uh, shutter assembly and remove the uh, aperture diaphragm from the back and remove the screws which hold it from the back side which is more than I'm sure what most of you would like to do uh, the simplest way to do this is just kind of the the rough and ready way and that is simply just to pry this top plate off uh, it's kind of riveted on there are rivets at either side which hold it into place and it, and sometimes they're screwed from the other side so what you want to do and I'm just going to go ahead and, and try that with this camera just kind of pop it off a lot of people who uh, would, would probably cringe at doing something like this but Dip the front over and let's go ahead and try the shutter out now. So I've managed to uh, disable uh, the self timer mechanism and uh, you know, it's not an elegant or beautiful way to repair the camera but it will get the camera going uh, in a very inexpensive and fast way. Uh, uh, my apologies to you those out there who are you know think this is kind of a barbaric way to fix a camera but uh, yeah, it's may you know it at least it makes the camera in working condition uh, you replace the shutter speed ring by putting the red dot toward the top where the button is and then uh, of course the shutter speed uh, 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 dot is on the top so you want the numbers to be on the top well so as well so I put it on there and I just kind of turn it so the the bottom hole in the plate uh, locks into the dowel and then I need to take my uh, retaining ring it's flat on the top and there's a ridge on the bottom the bottom has to, and the ridge has to face toward the shutter so drop it on and put it in very carefully because it has to go in flat without being cross threaded and it's quite easy for these uh, brass parts uh, to become cross threaded if you're not careful uh, okay and then you can tighten it using the screwdriver and 
right now this uh, shutter speed ring is turning a little bit too easy if I continue to tighten this down uh, the shutter speed ring will start to slow down a little bit and okay and that's about where I want it. It's a little bit difficult to turn that way. You won't turn it accidentally, but not so hard to turn that you have to kind of yank on it. Uh, to clean off the rear lens on the inside, just set the shutter to B and open up the aperture. And then you can use a cotton swab with a solvent and clean it. Make sure to clean very well and because uh, when you are cleaning the, the glass first when you do it it gets wet and then you use the dry side wet side then the dry side and as you dry it it leaves kind of a film of cotton fibers on the glass but if you keep rubbing the, the film of cotton fibers come off and then uh, you can blow out the dust a little bit and then just do the same method for cleaning uh, the back of the glass here Okay, and that's pretty much to it. It wasn't that difficult of a job, and right now this video is at about 16 and a half minutes. Uh, a more thorough job, it would probably take you longer, of course, to do it, uh, but uh, it's not a very difficult job and not hard to get one of these old cameras into at least running condition. Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, I'll be making more videos uh, next week. We've been out of town for some time, and uh, it's been kind of uh, hectic recently, so I'm looking forward to be able to uh, make more videos and uh, get back to uh, into, into the speed of things especially now that it's cherry blossom season uh, if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comment section below i uh, thank you very much for watching and i hope you tune in again soon